start with how I got here. And actually, I was shooting to go up there. Uh, I was shooting to, to be an astronaut. Uh, and, you know, astronauts are the heroes that make childhood dreams. You know, these men and women, uh, as many of you may have asked prior to become an astronaut, know that these men and women have this unique combination of brains and brawn that really make them something that, you know, as a child, everyone is, is often inspired uh, to become. And so I would often, as a child, look at the biographies of these astronauts and try to put together my own plan so that I could try to follow in their footsteps to get uh, myself into space. Uh, and essentially, I, I did that by, by getting a pilot's degree, getting an aerospace engineering degree, uh, and I was about to join the U.S. Air Force when things took a little bit of a different course. I looked back at those same astronaut biographies of these men and women who had gone to space, and I saw that many of these individuals, after they had seen the Earth from above against the blackness of space, would often see the Earth as this very precious place, very unique uh, across the cosmos. And they would wonder, why is there war? Why is there poverty in such a precious, unique place? And many of these astronauts would come back with this new perspective and become public school teachers or become farmers, essentially to reconnect with the world and its people. And while I didn't really go all the way there, I also had a similar sort of re realization, and I landed in a very different place with a very different sort of hero. I landed up in the fields of rural India where I met the men and women who do the hard work to give India the second highest farm output in the world. Now, as you'll know, Indian Farmers are an incredibly large and diverse community. 60% of the 1.2 billion population of the country depends on agriculture as a major source of its livelihood. And the diversity of farmers isn't just in terms of language or in terms of geography, but even in terms of agroecology, culture, uh, and the farming operations that each of these farmers are doing with respect to the various socioeconomic conditions of which they're living in. Agriculture as a percentage of GDP of, of the country represents 17% of, of, of the GDP but, and is sliding while 60% of the population depends on it. And this is precisely where modern sustainable agricultural practices could provide some gain. But Due to all sorts of factors, including environmental and political change, many of these types of, of distribution of information about these best agricultural practices just isn't being shared with the community. And for a community that has been engaged in agriculture for such a long period of time, just the same generic campaigns uh, without much of an association with the local situation aren't very effective in terms of changing the behavior of these communities such that they can realize some sustainable improvement to their livelihoods. But just as the early days of television created heroes out of astronauts, these same types of tools of information communication technologies can be leveraged to create incentives for farmers to improve themselves and to put themselves on a, or on a ladder of achievement that's not necessarily entirely based on money, but in which they can literally be seen as the best farmer. This, of course, has been done before. This is, was epitomized in the 1960s when the astronauts first landed on the moon and these grainy images of the astronauts working on the surface were etched in the memory of those people who would see these, these people on this faraway moon and really develop a connection with. And that's sort of how we've been able to create these heroes out of the astronauts. Nowadays, you know, many people perhaps don't really see 
astronauts as the heroes that they wish to emulate, but instead, you know, have a very different sort of idol, you know, the American or Indian idol that we and the large segment of our population now watches with 30 million viewers and 100 million voters in the last season finale of Indian Idol, it's clear that astronauts have been replaced by a very different sort of Indian Idol. But we can leverage these same sorts of approaches to really be able to create idols out of even farmers. And we can do so without necessarily using that high-end infrastructure of broadcast equipment of, of high-end video cameras and large distribution channels. But instead, we can bring this sort of dynamic of farmer idol to the local level thanks to the commoditization of information technology, primarily in terms of handy cams that can be used to create videos and these handheld Pico projectors, which can be used to distribute videos at really local levels to really involve the local participation of the communities themselves in this process of learning and discovery. We've been working for the last four years in four states with tribal communities in the states of Jharkhand, Orissa, Karnataka, and Madhya Pradesh to produce over 600 videos that are 8 to 10 minutes in length that are by the farmers, of the farmers, and for the farmers, and that span a variety of different types of topics across the agricultural season featuring step-by-step -step demonstrations, testimonials about sharing of, of best practices from one farmer to another. And this is just a sampling of some of that different types of videos that hit different aspects of, of agriculture, livestock, marketing, government services, that really the farmers are able to connect with because these videos feature fellow farmers that they're able to trust. Because often the first two questions that we often receive when farmers watch these videos is what is the name of that farmer in this video and which village is he or she from? Really, they want to be able to connect personally uh, with that farmer uh, who is appearing in these videos as they're watching them. We started this project in 2006 as a part of Microsoft Research India's Technology for Emerging Markets group in Bangalore. And we did a pilot evaluation of the system with comparison to traditional approaches of agricultural uh, extension of best practices. And we found that the system was 10 times more cost effective per dollar spent than the traditional approaches. And we did that in a relatively small number of villages in Karnataka. Since then, thanks to a, a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we spun off from being a research project into an independent uh, organization that is now scaling up this system so that more partners and more communities across the country uh, as well as into Africa can benefit from this system. And so far, we've extended the system to 400 villages and we're on track to extending the system to 1,200 villages in the next two years. And of course, you might be wondering, you know, how do we actually aggregate all of these videos from all these rural areas where internet uh, bandwidth may be relatively low or uh, intermittent? And what we have developed is a system called analytics, which allows us to bring together these videos and associated types of data in these types of environments so that we can really analyze at an individual farmer level, looking at their histories of participating in videos videos, perhaps taking up some of these practices on their own field, and use that information to essentially target the next intervention or the next video that they watch based on it. If you're familiar with Google's AdSense, which targets ads based on the search queries that you're giving to Google, essentially what we're trying to do is something similar, but in this case, the users, the farmers, are disconnected, that they're watching these videos on the handheld people projectors. But at the same time, we can leverage the benefits of being connected with the global internet uh, in a sort of asynchronous manner uh, and be able to realize the same benefits of giving the content and information that will better address the needs and interests that the community is expressing. 
Now, often in these technology for agricultural development types of projects, you know, there's often a focus of looking at the at the problem of of agricultural development in a very simplistic way, right? We often think about you know that there's farmers in these rural areas and that there's experts in perhaps urban areas, and that if only we could add some computers and internet connections that we'd be able to solve uh, the issues of agricultural development. But the problem is not so simple. There's all sorts of other challenges, including infrastructure, road connectivity, uh, electricity, as well as market access and quality control measures that make it the case that we can't just focus on these com computing devices and connectivity alone. We really need to look at these issues more holistically. And the same is true in other types of domains. Right? There's all sorts of projects where people want to be able to connect these, these handicraft makers in the rural areas uh, with perhaps export or domestic uh, markets in urban areas uh, by providing internet and, and computing facilities. But similarly, there's all sorts of challenges in terms of production and, and quality controls, even there, which make it the case that we can't just be focusing on technology alone, and even including in the rural medicine case, right? If there's not a doctor who's physically going to be able to provide support after a uh, after an individual has received some information, uh, then you know the value of that information uh, can easily be lost. Essentially, we often look at technology as a divide, right? We're, we often think about this di digital divide, but the reality is that you know there's all sorts of components uh, that will bring people in the developing uh, part of the country to perhaps the developed part of the country. And this, these things include things besides technology. Technology is, of course, one of these aspects, but we also need to consider the physical, human, social, and financial aspects of connecting these individuals in the developing parts of the country with the developed. Because in the developed world, you know, the first type of infrastructure that's typically laid is really the physical, the human, social, and financial. It's only after these basic sort of human needs are met, that we then think about adding on this layer of you know, digital interaction. And of course, we've all realized the significant benefits that the digital sort of the components of the world uh, do provide. But sometimes when we think about developing world areas and thinking about interventions that we can do in this space, we often just first think about the technology. We don't really think about you know the other aspects. And that's really going to make it impossible for us to cross this divide. We really need to be able to bring everything together such that we are able to realize this reality that technology on its own is able to achieve relatively little, right? What it's best able to do is to take all these components about society as it functions and the human intent and capability that it expresses and be able to amplify it so that more can participate. If we really want to see technology have the gains that we want to see in development, we really need to be able to work together and support organizations uh, that, and people that are in this space that are already doing good work and then leverage technology so that it can support and, and amplify its reach and accelerate its participation with the community. For that's really the only way that we're going to be able to realize the dream of say these astronauts, these are the Apollo 11 astronauts after, after they had returned to New York City after they had landed on the moon and they're celebrating on the ticker tape with the ticker tape parade. And similarly, we should be able to see a similar day when farmers are able to help themselves and help one another through some components of technology as well as important components of social organization such that they're able to create these sparks of curiosity to be interested and to learn and to develop such that they too can celebrate with their own ticker tape parades. Thank you very much.